Hello, church family. Uh, I'm glad to join you all for Station 2 of the Cross as we prepare our hearts and minds to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Our scripture for today is going to be Mark 14, verses 43 through 46, and it reads, And immediately, even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived with a crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the leading priests, the teachers of the religious law, and the elders. The traitor Judas had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. Then you can take him away under guard. As soon as they arrived, Judas walked up to Jesus. Rabbi, he exclaimed, and gave him the kiss. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. Betrayed with a kiss. Judas had been following Jesus since the beginning of his public ministry. For approximately three years, he learned from Jesus, saw the miracles, and most likely even participated in sharing the power of the Holy Spirit as he followed Jesus' commands to heal the sick and cast out demons. How could this happen? How could one of Jesus' close friends betray him into the hands of the enemy? As we study each of the four Gospels, we learn more about Judas' behavior and about his motives. In John 12, we read that while Mary was anointing Jesus' feet with oil, Judas commented, he said it was a waste of oil because the oil could have been sold and the money could have been given to the poor. But the Apostle John gives us commentary. He says that Judas didn't actually care about the poor, but instead he was the group's treasurer and having the money bag, he would help himself to what was in it. Yes, Judas was one of the 12. But remember, John 6, 71 records Jesus saying, did I not choose you, the 12, and yet one of you is a devil? You see, Jesus always knew Judas's heart. On the outside, Judas probably looked great. He attended the Bible studies. He preached about the gospel of the kingdom. He was with Jesus all the time but he was only about himself. He never seems to have died to himself. Let's look at this betrayal from another perspective. Matthew records that as the guards were apprehending Jesus, he stopped his disciples from fighting for him, saying these remarkable words, all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. In Acts 2.23, the Apostle Peter tells the men of Israel that Jesus was delivered over according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. Jesus even gave this tremendous warning in Luke 22.22 22, when he said, For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. As you reflect on this event in Jesus' life, praise God for his sovereignty and his mercy upon you. Through Christ, God showed the world his love and forgiveness and used Satan's schemes against him, putting him to open shame through the cross. Let's pray. Lord, grant us the courage of our convictions that our lives may faithfully reflect the good news you bring. I pray that Jehovah Rapha, the great physician, will heal the wounds of betrayal and that forgiveness will be applied to those who have been hurt. Amen.